Welcome to Real Talk, the unedited, scripted, unfiltered show where I sit down with a gaming personality and talk about anything and everything. I haven't done one of these in a while, and I'm sorry for that. Um, I wanted to start the show back up at the right time and doing an episode about a player who has recently started on his own path as a professional StarCraft II player seems proper. Conan Liu, known as Suppy in the world of StarCraft II, has been around since the Brood War days. It wasn't until recently, however, that he has become a top player in North America and a fan favorite. I'm excited to talk about his childhood, StarCraft II, and playing for Team Evil Geniuses. Suppy, welcome to Real Talk, man. What's up? Glad to be here. So, I gotta ask you first, where, where did the, the name Suppy come from? Because I, I know it, it's short for Superior Wolf. Where did that come from, I guess? Yeah, so this is a question I get pretty often, actually. And it's something that, you know, it's kind of vague to me how, I came, how it happened. But from what I can recall, uh, my brother somehow hacked the password of some guy's Diablo, 3, uh, Diablo 2 account. And their name was Superior Wolf. And so he ended up giving that account to me. And I started using that account. And I started using that name everywhere else. And eventually, I had some friends on Battle.net who were like, Superior Wolf is a little bit too long. We're just going to start calling you Suppy. So that's how that came. So a hacked account is what started it all. Yeah. So wherever the real Superior Wolf <laughs> is, I apologize. Oh, man. Did you have any other names that you used prior to that? Or, or was that the first one? Um... I had some names I used. One was like Conana, which is kind of like a little, okay. like Conana Banana. Everybody calls me that, so I made that one of my account names. Other than that, it was, it was always Superior Wolf then, huh? Yeah, pretty much always Superior Wolf. Well, as with uh, most Real Talks do, let's start with your, your personal life. Uh, where were you born and uh, where'd you grow up? Um, so I was actually born in Portland, Maine, and... I moved to Virginia until I was five, and I grew up mostly in California. Uh, wh when would you say you moved to California specifically? How old were you? Uh, when I was five. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, was that, was that like a big switch to you? Were you old enough to really know what was happening there? Or was it just like another day that you were just kind of crossing the, the country? Yeah, I, I don't remember it too much. I have like some vague memories of in Virginia, where I had some of my friends. Uh, but, yeah, it's pretty vague memory, memories from Virginia. So definitely I'd say most of my growing up was in California. Uh, what did your parents do for work as, as a child, and, and do they do the same thing today? Um, so when I was a child, my parents actually had just come over from China. And both of them were actually doctors in China. Uh, but obviously when they came over to the United States, they didn't have like the same licensing or degrees or whatever. So my dad was working in a restaurant and doing a lot of odd, odd jobs while my mom was going to medical school to become a doctor in the United States. Um, and one interesting thing is she actually did her residency while she was pregnant with me. And residency is huh. basically the most intense part of the doctor process, becoming a doctor process. Um, and yeah. Do you have any brothers or sisters, or are you an only child? Uh, yeah, I have an older brother who's six years older than me, and he basically was the one who introduced me to StarCraft and all the games I know. What, what does he do for, for work these days? Uh, he's actually going to medical school himself right now, so we have kind of like a medical school like tradition, I guess. <laughs> what, was, uh, what was grade school like for you when you were growing up? Um, I think I had a pretty good experience with grade school. Um, I had a pretty typical elementary school experience. I think everybody just kind of like had fun, played around the playground a lot. I was stuck in the YMCA like every day, so I had to do a lot of those like weird activities. Uh, and then in middle school is when I kind of really started getting into like, computers and computer gaming and stuff. Uh, and middle school was probably actually the worst time for me because people were really mean in middle school. Uh, like one time I was biking back. I don't know why, this happened twice, but I, as I was biking back from school, uh, some random people in cars like threw oranges at me, and like, I was like, really, really, it was really, really su sucky, like, I had to do like a police report, and I remember I was like crying in the police report, like, they were like throwing stuff at me, like, it happened twice, uh, one time they threw eggs, the other time they threw like oranges at me. For no reason at all? Yeah, and I didn't know who it was, so, I was really sad, um... 
so people in middle school were a little bit more mean to me, but I also met some of my best friends in middle school as well, so there were some upsides as well. Um, and definitely probably my, the biggest thing about middle school is that's when I started commentating. I was like 14 or 13 or 14. And I would remember every time I'd bike home from school, I'd be thinking about like, oh, I want to go on YouTube and like check the comments on my videos and <laughs> on my commentaries and stuff. We'll get to those uh, videos a little bit later uh, in the show because I know a lot of people know about them, but if they don't, I do want to introduce them uh, to that because it is, it is pretty comical looking back. But <laughs> yeah. were, were you a good student? Uh, I mean, were you straight A's? Were you lazy in school? What, what were you like? Uh, yeah, I was a pretty, I was a very good student, I'd say. Like, I had mostly all straight A's, uh, except I got like a B plus in biology freshman year. Um, but yeah, I've always been really motivated as well as I have like Asian parents, so obviously they were pushing me a lot, but I also pushed myself a lot because I really, really liked learning and doing academics, so I was a pretty good student. Did you do anything else uh, outside of kind of academia while you were in <clears throat> school? Yeah, Great one of the big... Rather? Yeah, one of the big things I did in high school, uh, aside from academics, was I was part of the volleyball team, and so I did club volleyball and uh, like the high school team volleyball, and also some other smaller clubs like Science Alliance, where we'd mentor like third graders who were doing science projects. We'd like mentor them, and model United Nat Nations. Um, those are probably the three big ones. Did you have a, a specific favorite there, or were, were you kind of pushed to do the extra curricular activities because of your parents? Um, my, de my favorite was definitely volleyball. Um, I was really, really passionate about it. I was probably like as passionate about it as I was for StarCraft at the time. And it was actually something that my parents did push me, for me to do at first, because my mom uh, used to play volleyball with me, just like one-on-one. -on -one. We just like She like taught me how to play, and I was really scared to go go to tryouts or whatever, but she pushed me to go and I think that was like the best things I ever did in high school was probably to go to volleyball tryouts and get involved in volleyball. Did you ever, I mean, get any accolades for, for volleyball? Were you part of a, a good team or anything like that? Um, our team ended up, in my senior year, we got um, top eight of the Northern California section. Uh, which was pretty good. Uh, I was never like an amazing player myself. Um, when I was a sophomore, I was on varsity, and our team uh, ended up getting second place. Wow! Uh, but I I wasn't playing at the time. I was just like a bench warmer. So yeah. Now, kind of personality wise, uh, would you consider yourself to be the quiet type, or are you kind of social and outgoing? What What would you really classify yourself as? So I've always considered myself to be pretty introverted, introverted and quiet. Um, but actually, like in the StarCraft community, a lot of people who I meet uh, at events and stuff, they think that I'm very extroverted and talkative <laughs> and want to like go out and meet people. Um, I think it's probably something to do with when I have something in common to talk about with someone, I'm a lot more talkative. But when I'm talking about just like a normal person about like movies and stuff which I don't really watch too much or like sports which I basically don't follow at all um, I ha I'm a lot more shy because I don't really know you know what to talk about do you think that's uh, I mean maybe this is me kind of reading into a little bit but do you think that's why you went down the path of, of being so involved within StarCraft because it was something that kind of brought people together under a common flag something that you enjoyed as well yeah, I definitely think that's something, maybe one reason why I became so much more passionate and involved in StarCraft. Like, I, I remember I'd start going, I started going to my first LANs, and that's where I met, like, some really, really good friends. How old were you when you started going to your first LANs? I think my first LAN was eighth grade, so I was also around, four, it was around the same time, it was like 14 or so. Okay. It's good um, stuff, good stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm always glad to hear that people had kind of the same experience that I did, because LANs were... Those are some of the best times, man. You always did crazy stuff at lands, and it was it was a ton of fun back then. Still yeah. is today. If you have never been to one, I I definitely recommend it. But jumping back to uh, to yourself, you're currently in school right now, uh, even in summer school, right? Uh, in in college. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to UC Berkeley, and I'm going to be a junior soon, uh, majoring in integrative biology, which is basically just biology, but they changed the name for some reason. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm taking summer classes right now, so I basically am in school 
all year. I was supposed to go to Korea this year, but ended up having to take summer classes instead. Uh, what what do you plan to do with with your degree, kind of moving forward, if this whole StarCraft thing doesn't work out? I mean, the default plan has always been to go to medical school. Uh, that's the path kind of my parents have always wanted me to go to, and also the path that I've wanted to do. Um, but I've also wanted to get more involved in esports as well. So, not totally sure what, what's going to happen in the coming years. Well, I want to revisit school, uh, but I kind of want to tie it in with the next topic. So we'll come back to it in just a bit. But talk to me about video games. What, what was your first experience uh, with video games? You said your brother was l uh, largely responsible for introducing them to you, correct? Yeah. So he was the first person to introduce me to, like, we started playing with Nintendo 64 games. Um, and I remember my favorite games at the time were, like, Diddy Kong Racing, Zelda... Or Korean of Time, Goldeneye, and Goldeneye was probably my favorite because you like got to compete against each other, right? So he he really was the one who started getting me into games, and basically whatever game he would start playing, I would start playing as well. And I was always very frustrated because he was always better than me, right? So every <laughs> every single game I would get second place to him. Um, and after that, we started getting into computer games, and uh, that's what led us to StarCraft eventually. So you came into kind of the video game generation of the uh, the 64? You didn't play anything prior to that? Yeah, I mean, I had played like Reader Rabbit or something, which is like some inter interactive learning game. My brother did play some Super Nintendo, uh, and I'm not sure if he did anything before that, but I that's probably my first memory of him playing something was like Zelda on Super Nintendo. Uh, but for me, it was definitely N64, I think. And Goldeneye, you said, was your favorite just because of the, the competitiveness within the game? Yeah, yeah. So, I guess jumping to like the PC days, what was StarCraft just the first and only game that you played when, when you started out, or did you venture out to, to maybe Counter Strike or anything like that? Um, yeah, so we started off with StarCraft, um, but at first we were just playing use map settings and stuff. Eventually we got bored of it, and so we did start moving on to different games. So, uh, I did move, I did play some Dota for quite a while with like Team Liquid people. Um, and I did uh, also play some Counter-Strike, and that was one of my favorite games as well. And we played all those sorts of, I guess you could call them casual games. Like, we'd play those uh, games, uh, KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic. Of course. That was a really good game. Great yeah. game, man. Great game. Yeah. And I, oh yeah, I can't miss this one, but probably the biggest one that I spent the most time on was RuneScape for a very long time. Really? So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Never, never. Did you ever play any Ultima or anything like that? I know it was a little bit past your time, but you never went back and tried out Ultima Online. Uh, no, I don't even know what that is. Really, yeah. man. Sounds a little familiar, but Ultima Online. Just, just go check it out, Suppy. After this, do yourself a favor. DJ Wheat would be proud that I'm telling you about Ultima Online. <laughs> uh, it, it was a good game. It was a good game. Uh, RuneScape, I mean, how involved were you in, in RuneScape? Did you play it kind of religiously? or? I played it religiously for a while. Um, I know, I know like, actually the time frame that I played it because uh, there was this special item that they gave you in 2003. So <laughs> I was playing in like 2002 or some, something, and then I played all the way to like, 2008 maybe and then i'd like play like off and on like i, I played wow. a lot wow yeah and so you never got sucked into world of warcraft did you keep yourself away from that game is that how that happened i always knew that if i started playing world of warcraft i'd get really addicted to it because you were the smart I know, one yeah i know the type <laughs> of game and i know i would like that game uh i did actually do one month trial with my friends we got like triple exp uh but then after the first month i was like this game is too fun. Like I'm not gonna play anymore. <laughs> like I can't spend too much time on this. Was that right around the time that you were starting college, or what? What was kind of the deterrent just from from stopping you to play other than your own self? So at the time, I think it was a combination of uh, I was already starting to compete in like StarCraft One. I, I was starting to compete, and StarCraft Two was just coming out at the time. And uh, also, like the subscription fee was like. A pretty big turnoff for me because I didn't mm. want to pay that. So, understood, understood. Uh, I mean, outside of video games and and volleyball and academia, did you do anything else as a kid, kind of growing up? Is there any other particular activities you took uh, took upon yourself? 
Uh, I mean, like the typical Asian kid, I played piano and clarinet. So were you good, or are you uh, good? I uh, I'm I'm good compared to the average American, but probably not <laughs> so good compared to the average like Asian. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, other things I did, I used to do animations. So really, uh, yeah, like in Flash, uh, I used Flash, and I'd make some animations, and I made a couple StarCraft related animations. Uh, that was a big hobby of mine for quite a while, but. Um, ended up falling out of that when I started getting more competitive in StarCraft. I know a lot of people are going to be asking, I mean, is that stuff on the, the web somewhere? Can people tune into you watching? Are you playing piano or you any of your animations? Uh, probably, probably not piano, but uh, there are definitely some of my animations still in my Team Liquid blogs. Uh, and yeah, they're like little short clips, but they're actually pretty entertaining. So yeah. I'm, I, I'm sure people will dig them up. I'm sure they'll yeah. dig them up. Um, I will one request you need to, to post a video of you playing the piano perhaps maybe just throwing this out perhaps you could serenade one Jeff and control Robinson <laughs> might be good it might okay. be good uh, so let's jump to the present now and, and talk about uh, combined kind of school and, and games uh, specifically this this balancing act that you're doing with Starcraft 2 in, in college um, I guess just kind of talk about that for a second I mean how hard is that to do um, it's definitely pretty difficult, especially because I think Berkeley is a pretty rigorous and competitive college, and there's a lot of people here, um, which makes it so all the curriculum is geared towards like weeding people out and like trying to just make everything really difficult. Um, and so I can't really play nearly as much as I'd like to. Like, to be honest, my goal is to play just two hours a day, and sometimes I can't even do that, which is really, really like a really tiny com number, if, especially if you compare it to other players and stuff. And I realize this. Um, usually on weekends, I'm able to catch up on that. Like I can play several more hours. Um, but it's definitely something that takes up a lot of my time. Uh, and it is difficult to balance um, schoolwork with gaming. I, I'm, I don't even know where to start with that because it just seems... I mean, I did that in, in college, but let's be honest, I had a communications art degree. It was, it was a joke compared to what you're doing. So uh, going away for these weekend events, I, I assume, is just incredibly hard, is it not? Yeah, so one thing that I've tried to do after I joined EG is I've tried to kind of bunch all my classes to Tuesday through Thursday. So that way, when I do go to events, I'm missing less than I would. Uh, and, I mean, I still do miss a lot of the work that I could have done uh, by going to these weekend events, but I don't know. I just, I just have to focus more and make it up, I guess. I also take uh, basically the minimum amount of units to be full-time, so that kind of helps me, and then I can take more units over the summer, so basically I spread out everything uh, in order to give myself more time, I guess. Let, let's kind of get down to the specifics here so people have a general understanding. The minimum uh, hours, is is it 12? Or what, what is it for, for Berkeley? How many credits is it? Um, so it's 13 units minimum okay. for full-time, uh, which is supposed to correlate to some kind of hour thing, but I, I've never really sure. understood how, what it is. How many really... classes is that? I've never understood it either. Is that three or four? It's like three big classes and one small class. Okay. So like one pretty easy small class. So let's let's just kind of, for example, um, I mean, what what was your spring semester lineup? Just so people understand kind of what you were doing in StarCraft II as well as doing in school and how hard that must be. Yeah, so spring semester I was taking um, f my first physics class here. Um, I was taking the first biology class. I was taking uh, an English class and organic chemistry. So. Well... It, it it sounded pretty tame until you got to organic chemistry. So, <laughs> yeah. you poor you poor soul. Um, I mean, Polt is kind of he's doing the same thing, and he said that it's it's incredibly difficult. Uh, are there any kind of? I mean, do, if people are wanting to do this and wanting to be insane like yourself, what what are some of the tips that you give those guys? I mean, just just balance is is that the best thing? Time management and balance. Yeah, I mean, it's really tough, but. Even for me, I, I recognize that I don't even manage my time that well. Like I procrastinate just like everybody else. Uh, I'll spend like hours like watching YouTube sometimes, like on some <laughs> days randomly. Like I could definitely be doing a lot better of a job myself. So I think it all comes down to definitely it comes down to time management 
and just limiting all the distractions that don't really like I spend so much time reading random threads on Team Liquid, which I should I really shouldn't be doing. Um, and then another strategy I have is basically when a midterm is coming up, I'll kind of be focused a lot more on school and kind of put off StarCraft for a little bit, whereas like a big tournament is coming up, I'll kind of put my academics on hold for a little bit and focus a lot more for the tournament. Um, but I definitely think it's possible for anybody to do it, really, because uh, when uh, I was gearing up for Blizzard World Championships in Shanghai last year, I was actually extremely, extremely motivated. And I was even able to play five or six hours a day, even with all my school and everything, and I was completing everything because I was just, I was just very motivated to do well. So I eliminated like all distractions in my life, and I didn't procrastinate at all. So if I could achieve that again, I think that'd be really good for me. And I think it shows that there is the time that exists for everybody to, uh, to do m like many things, like esports and academics at the same time. You just have to kind of make sure you're not wasting any time doing anything extraneous. How hard is that motivation for you to keep up? I mean, you said that you could, you did it for Shanghai, but since then I, you, you've kind of backed down. So, is that like a once in the year I get so exhausted type deal, or or what, how how hard is it to keep that up? Yeah, it's definitely a combination. Sometimes I get burnt out because StarCraft is a very stressful and you know demanding game, whereas sometimes I just want to like sit down and play like Dota or something, which. It's, a little, it's more relaxing for me, at least, and I get to socialize with friends. Um, but motivation-wise, I think another big thing was Blizzard World Championship was kind of like the big thing. And after that, I, like, I don't know, maybe I like spent all my motivation and <laughs> kind of my motivation reserves like decreased. Uh, but I've been building them back up again, so hopefully I can pull something like that again and train really hard for an event like that. Are, are big events the biggest motivator for you or the, does the community have any kind of if someone if a lot of people are supporting you or there's a post on reddit kind of supporting you for for what you've done does that help you out a lot what, what's the biggest motivator for you I think actually yeah I mean big events are always a huge motivator but I think the main thing that drives me is really like the support um, from the community and stuff and being able to see like people's reactions to how I'm doing and everything. That's something that really, really motivates me. And even the people who say, oh, Suppy sucks or he's a terrible player or whatever, even that motivates me because I get the motivation to want to kind of disprove them, right? So I think it is definitely a combination of both, and I do get more motivated as big tournaments are coming up. But I think the primary thing that drives me is you know, people, people's comments and their opinions. What do your parents think about all this? Do they... I mean, I, I imagine when you first started out, they were just like, Conan, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? Is it, it was it that, and, and has it changed since then? Yeah, well, I mean, I've been gaming for a long, long time, and just kind of just gaming and not really doing anything other than casual gaming. And my parents have always been kind of the typical Asian parents, that they'd yell at me when I was playing too much. They would, like, lock the room to the computer door. That uh, far, huh? Yeah, and I would like, I'd remember, even when I was up to like teenage years, I would be like banging on the door and like <laughs> trying to get in. I'd be really, really mad. What was, the, what was the meanest thing that your parents did to you when it came to kind of separating you from gaming? Was it that or was there anything harsher? Um, they've done, I mean, they've done like, there's nothing really harsher, but they've done like, you know, they've done the typical pull the plug while like I'm in a game, <laughs> like locking the door for like a day. And a day feels like a very, very oh, long time. It's, it's terrible. I've had it done to me before. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. It's really bad. Um, yeah. but, but they've changed, you said? Um, they haven't really changed, but I think... I mean, they have changed a little bit. I'd say they're more lenient than many Asian parents as well, because uh, basically when I asked to go to my first LAN, I was really scared they were going to say no. And they were actually pretty open about it. They were like, yeah, you should go. Like, it'll be fun for you. And they, they were pretty supportive about it. Um, when I start, started organizing lands and stuff, they were pretty supportive about it and even wanted to like help fund like the prize pool sometimes. Really? Wow. Yeah. And uh, they ended up going to MLG Dallas uh, in November of last year. And that was the first event they ever went to. And I think I could feel like a, 
a little bit of their like parental pride or something because they were like really excited whenever I like had to sign an autograph. They like oh, that's awesome. Took pictures and like were like all like doty about it. Did yeah. uh, did I put you on stage in Dallas last year? I forget. Did they? Did you get a stage match? Because if not, I am incredibly sorry. Your parents did not <laughs> get to see that. No, I don't think I got a stage match, unfortunately. Oh. But I did do decently well in the tournament, so they were pretty happy about that. Okay. Well, tell your parents that I'm incredibly sorry <laughs> for not putting you on stage. Uh, there's no one else to blame but me for that. Um, I, I, I can't believe that... I mean, do they see that... Was it more, in your opinion, was it more that when he started going to these lands, they were like, oh, Conan's... He's going outside, like... He's going outside with the world and not staying in. Was it more of that, or or was it really just like, sure, that'll be that'll be good for you? I think now that you bring that up, I never looked at it that way. But I think now that you brought that up, I'm ruining I'm been... ruining your entire. <laughs> your parents <laughs> thought it was something completely different. I'm I'm just ruining everything, Conan. Because <laughs> like when I was in high school, they were always like, "Oh, you should go hang out with your friends more. Like you should go like to your friend's house." And I was like, "No." Oh, so man. that probably was like part one of their reasons. Does does the money help at all? I mean, I assume you have collected some uh, monetary gains from this. Do, does that help at all with their kind of reasoning? Um, I mean, I think they think it's really cool that I'm actually able to earn something like playing a video game rather than just sitting and kind of not really earning anything because that kind of justifies me spending so much time more. Because before, I didn't really have any reason to be like, to argue with them like why I'm playing so many video games but now it's definitely something that helps me it's like is in my favor if I have like an argument or something with them what does your brother think about all this does he think you're just a badass for doing all of it yeah he thinks it's really cool and he's he's like a big proponent of wanting me to go full time like he says I should just take a year off right now and just go full time immediately like while I still have the chance and I um, I mean, it's something I've considered and something I kind of want to do, but I also understand my parents' expectations are, they, they're still number one, like, prioritize your academics, don't lose focus, blah, blah, blah. So, and I know they'd be very disappointed if I did do something like that. So um, that's something that him and, he actually argues with my parents sometimes. Like, he's he's telling my parents that they should let me take a year off, so... What about for you personally? I mean, is there a lot of internal back and forth of, of maybe I should take a, a year off or no, I should probably focus on school? Yeah, like I don't, I don't really know like what my, what my future is going to be, you know? Like I do want to take a year off and, you know, see what I can do with it and see if I can make this something that I could, you know, live my life with because I think that'd be really awesome. Uh, on the other hand, I you know, I have my parents' expectations as well as, you know, there's also the stability of going into like the medical profession and, you know, it's like, it's a hard decision for me to make. And that's kind of the reason I'm still in school right now. I'm, it's kind of a backup plan, but I don't really know what my options are. I don't really know what decision I'm going to make. So it is definitely a big internal conflict right now, right now for me. Uh, we'll get to EG a little bit later, but uh... Have they influenced that decision at all? I mean, did, does Alex kind of talk to you, the, the CEO of EG, for those not aware, does does he talk to you about this at all? Or it, are they just leaving it completely up to you, really, what you want to do? Um, they've been supportive of me as a, like a college a player who is in college at the same time. Um, at the same time, they've also expressed interest in me going full-time, as in they think it'd be very nice if I went full-time and they'd support me more. Uh, and they would... You know, they they would want me to go full time so I can kind of grow myself as a player more. So while they have been supportive, they also have expressed interest in me going full time as well. Well, let, let's get to some easier questions here, uh, Conan. Are you recognized a lot at school at all? Uh, if so, what what is that like? Uh, yeah, I actually am recognized sometimes, uh, <laughs> and ironically, it's always at the gym. It's, really. It's, yeah, it's kind of weird because you, you wouldn't think nerds would find me at the gym, right? Right, but right. It's like 99% of the time it's at the gym. <laughs> what, uh, what are those experiences like? Are you, are you just excited or have you ever been like caught off guard by it and it's kind of awkward or what, what are they like? Um, it's usually pretty cool because uh, I, I basically, it's, they kind of all go the same. I like say hi, we like meet. They're like, oh, it's Suppy. Like, 
that's so cool. I watched your stream yesterday or something. And I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You should join the eSports at Berkeley like, eSports club. And they're like, okay, yeah, I'll check it out. So it's pretty cool. Sometimes they like take pictures with their iPhones and stuff. <laughs> I got to ask, have you had any bad interactions like that? Uh, at events, I've had some really awkward ac- interactions. Yeah. Uh, there was one guy who would like follow me around everywhere and just like smile but wouldn't say anything. And like, even Jesus. when I'd go to the bathroom, he'd like wait for me outside of the bathroom. Holy crap. That wasn't yeah, in was... Dallas with your parents, was it? Uh, no, that actually was in Dallas with my parents. Oh my God. My Did... brother was that there too. My whole family was there. And my brother kept being like, man, that guy's really weird. <laughs> oh, man. I hope that guy, that guy will definitely watch this. But <laughs> 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 it's okay. Seppi, you still, you still enjoy his, his fandom. Yeah, right? I still appreciate it. Okay, good, good. We're cut. We got it. We got it all covered. Yeah. Um, what what in in public has that ever happened just i mean going to a movie getting food or anything like that um oh yeah so like actually when i went with jeff and anna to a movie um like two or three months ago when they first came here to the bay area we did go see a movie and as soon as we came out there was people who recognized like everybody from eg so that was pretty cool now let's be honest here suppy was was jeff and control robson wearing his eg attire during the movie and at the movie. I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he was. I think, he, I think it's definitely possible. <laughs> oh, man. For calling Jeff out. I guess <laughs> you can call that calling him out. Um, it, going back and, and just reflecting on your childhood overall, um, would you change anything? Is there anything you'd go back and, and redo? I mean, I think I would have like to have been more social um, especially in high school I would have liked to have gotten more involved in school events and the school spirit and everything uh, which is something I started to do in my senior year but by then it was kind of late uh, and I also would have worked harder in volleyball because it's one of those things I was really really passionate about and I'm a little bit sad because I pretty much don't have a chance or any opportunities to keep continuing being competitive in volleyball anymore because in college or from now on, it's just going to be kind of casual. Um, so I would have really liked to have really worked my ass off trying to get better at volleyball. Um, but I think, I think everybody has a lot of things that they'd like to change about their childhood. And I think, you know, it's good to think about that, but also changing your childhood, like your childhood is what makes you who you are today. And going back and changing it would basically result in someone who isn't you so mm. we regardless of the ups and downs we should cherish our childhoods um so there were there would be some things i'd change but uh i am also pretty happy with the childhood i had do you ever think and, and this is the last question of this segment do you ever think that you will one day kind of make that decision starcraft or school or will it always be this balancing act eventually there's going to be a time where i'm going to have to make a decision and just go full force towards one's direction toward one direction so i think that time is probably going to happen after i graduate in about a year and a half um and that's when i'm really gonna have to decide what i'm gonna do okay well we will all probably eagerly be waiting that decision but guys that uh ends part one here of real talk with suppy coming up next we will be focusing pretty much on starcraft 2 so we hope you join us we'll see you guys later Bye bye